Let's go to Death Valley. See that drip? Right away, man. Catch it. Traffic, one mic, mic, one mile, one mile, two five, low approach. Winds out of the south. Our destination is right over this, and then we got to drop all the way back down into Saline Valley. Extreme topography around here. It's been a very high mountain flight. Coming on down here, check it out. The shadows coming off the Inyo range, cutting across the valley here. One way deal. down here. All right, first time chicken strip. Up here should be the parking area. Welcome to the chicken strip. Man, that last little bit of afternoon sun is blazing warm. The outside air temperature only says 60 degrees on my gauge here, but it is warm. It's kind of like landing on the moon or Mars once you get here without any wind. There's not a single noise out here at all. No F-18s yet. Rains a lot like something you'd see on on Mars, though I have never been there. <laughs> it's 
go check out one of the warm springs over there before it gets too cold too late. We'll set up camp later. for a dip. That, boys and girls, is the sound of freedom. It's gonna keep us out of scraps like what's going on over in Ukraine right now. F-18s over Saline Valley, Death Valley. Night flying, here comes two. Listen up. F-18s get their night flying currency. That little solo stove makes for a bright and cheery little camp. But if you listen out there tonight, you cannot hear a thing except the tinnitus in between your ears. And that's what I like about places like this. It's, it's not easy to get to. Especially on something like a motorbike. <laughs> if you've ever driven down that Saline Valley Road on a four-wheel drive, you you know how, how long and slow and rough that road is. But having the skills and the ability to come out here and enjoy remote places like this, to me, is worth more than all the money in the world. I hear another F-18. Good to hear the coyotes. <laughs> Waiting for the sun, sun to come down here and warm us up here at camp. I'll tell you a little bit about the flight coming down here. It was pretty cool last night down in... It's cold right now, down in the 40s or so. Got the jet boil stove going, got our morning coffee. And then we'll go show you the hot springs. So coming down here to Death Valley, a couple things you want to think of is this is major mountain flying. You are surrounded by peaks that are upwards of 12 to 14,000 feet tall. You think you're coming to Death Valley and it's below sea level? <laughs> 
you got to cross some major mountain ranges to get down here. I'll tell you in the flat, in the route description here in a second. And then the other thing is you want to pick the weather. You want to make sure there is a good solid, you're in the middle of a good solid high pressure area to make sure there's no winds down here because the winds can just get absolutely howling and you do not want to be messing around with these mountains in windy conditions at all. So a good solid high pressure for a couple of days. I worked it out such that I had a nice tailwind on the way down here. Hopefully maybe even have a tailwind on the way home depending on my route all right we got some warmth in route feel it already nice review of this year's camping gear looks a lot like last year's camping gear starting with the rei passage 2 tent instead of the passage 1 tent a little upgrade uh, the Big Agnes Q-Core insulated inflatable mattress absolutely got to have one of those I'd like to find one that's about twice as wide as this. Um, inflatable pillows, and then I just grabbed a couple more pillows off of the uh, hanger couches. What I like to do is have all this camping gear just kind of laying around the hanger so that I don't have to think a whole lot about packing uh, a giant loop dry bag to keep the little stuff in. A few more pillows, a, another one of the kids' sleeping bags for the bottom. The Cat's Meow Big Agnes no correction, North Face Cat's Meow sleeping bag. And then I brought a second sleeping bag with me because I knew it was going to be cold here last night. To help cover me up there. A couple of uh, yeah, Big Agnes lightweight foldable chairs. That one you can kind of use for your feet or for a table. And that's a real nice one for sitting around camp in. And then of course the solo stove the small solo stove allows you to make tiny but really bright little cheery fires out of just tiny little scraps of of wood plenty of water some lucy lights these are the solar powered lights lightweight collapsible lights at night and then the jet boil stove for the morning coffee uh, a tarp to put everything on some instant coffee and then just bring snacks for food. I don't want to bring anything that I have to prepare. And this little Thermalite insulate, insulator blanket uh, you can put on before you get into your sleeping bag really helps warm up things in the sleeping bag. So it do cool off at night and all that frosty air from the mountains comes down into this valley. And then in the Husky, a lot of this loose, lightweight stuff can fit back here in a custom bag that fits here in the maintenance access compartment to get to your battery and your flight controls down the tail of the aircraft. Nice big bag, carry all that lightweight stuff, but you got to limit it to, oh, 20 pounds or so for FCG. And that leaves you plenty of room then in the baggage compartment for all the rest of your stuff. Then as far as electronics go, I'm running a 4Flight on the iPad, uh, Stratus ADS-B receiver, this inReach, Delorme inReach, take it on all my adventures, 26 bucks a month, uh, subscription through Garmin. You can text home using the GPS satellites with this. They can track you at home with this. And... Of course, you can call for the cavalry with the SOS button and then a pair of uh, light speed noise canceling headsets. And uh, this cell phone and that GoPro is it for camera production work. Sun's up. We can get rolling. Let's go check out those hot springs. See all this doo-doo here? One, fortunately, last night, there were no donkeys. One of the non-native species that's kind of moved into Death Valley after the gold rush is the burrows, donkeys. As the uh, miners came across the west here, the horses couldn't handle this dry, rugged terrain, but the burrows could. And <laughs> after the gold rush, the burrows that were left loose just thrived down here in Death Valley. And so now there's a pretty big campaign to help maintain the uh, 
size of the herd of these burrows. And last time I was down here, they were all gathering them up down there at the Furnace Creek because they're kind of there ain't much for them to eat out here, and it's kind of hard on the what little <laughs> brush is left out here. The other thing about the burrows is they're just so dang noisy at night. I like it nice and quiet out here. Some well-stocked pit toilets available here at the lower spring. The water temperature in this pool is just perfect and there's no smell, no sulfury smell at all in this. The uh, inlet pipe right there, the source pool is up there, which is much too hot. There's several other, a whole other series of springs above us here. And the water filters on out through the field there. Here's a good example of some of the wood plumbing they used to use around the west here to convey water. You build a wood pipe and it swells up and you hold it together with the wires. These springs are caretaken by volunteers that generally hang out over here and do a great job of keeping this place really clean. Here's the source pool for these springs, much too hot. Ha, ah, four-wheel camper. If you're gonna drive in here, that's the way to go. A four-wheel drive truck and a lightweight pop-up camper like a four-wheel camper. Anything else is just gonna get trashed on these long, dusty roads, washboard roads getting into here. Or an airplane. This is Major Tom who runs the Saline Valley Warm Springs Facebook page, which he has mixed feelings about. <laughs> Everybody else took two steps back and Major Tom got stuck with it. The, the secret's been out for a while. <laughs> the secret's long been out. This is the inside the happy of homeowner. the happy homeowner. <laughs> this is inside the shift pod tent. Uh, what size tent was this? Um... It's, it's the big one. It's the big the one. Pod two. The, yeah. It's a bit like an igloo in here, but uh, it's warmer. And and so he's able to run a buddy heater in here. Uh, this is pretty much his kitchen tent set up here. It's got a hard, it's got a zip in floor. It's got reflective siding, insulated sides, pops right up in a jiffy. Just all this other stuff he's going to drag around that takes so much time. <laughs> it's too bad he didn't get here earlier. You could have seen the whole setup. Yeah, the because... Stove, the lights, uh, you know. Did you have the other pod hooked up too? Yeah. Okay, so he's got a second pod. They connect together um, modular, and so you sleep in the other one and you cook in this one. Yeah, and a vestibule connects the two. Excellent. Shift pod tents. Man. So it's Pretty sort cool. of like the space station, only yeah. these, these doors are a little... <laughs> these, these doors are sobriety tests. Yeah. <laughs> when you're camping on Mars, you know, you got to have the space station. <laughs> First time I saw one of these, I, I thought somebody had landed from Mars. See? I saw it hold up against a heavy wind, and I went over, talked to the guy. I said, you know, if my camper, I got a Lance, big uh -huh. Lance, 3,000 pound Lance. Oh yeah. And I thought if that ever breaks, I'm gonna get these. By the next day, I've decided if I get them today, I'll, my Lance won't break. Uh -huh. So <laughs> Just my, use Lance, my Lance weighs 3,000 pounds, See? and it's got 80 square feet. Mm -hmm. The two shift pods in the vestibule, I've got over 200 square feet, and it weighs about 300 pounds. There you go. you got to travel light out here because these roads are miserable getting in and out of here. It's a lot easier coming in without 3,000 pounds strapped to your ass. There you go. Mm -hmm. Go light, go fast, go far. <laughs> Don't go fast. <laughs> Don't, Don't go, go fast. You, you will not save time going fast <laughs> out right. here. Well, that's what we shift, do on the motorbike. It's going to break. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, on the bike, you can go fast. That's right. <laughs> but not, but not too fast. Not in the truck. <laughs> Now here's the source pool for the upper springs. There's the volcano pool over there and the wizard pool over there built by the wizard of Palm Springs or from Palm Springs.
So here's the quick version on the history of these springs according to Major Tom Ganner, who I spoke to today, who cleared up some misconceptions on my part as to how these springs got started. So I showed you the two source, source pots for water, and in the 1930s when the CCC Conservation Corps was building, one of their projects was building the Saline Valley Road, that longest dirt road in California, over 100 miles long from Lone Pine down to Death Valley. They came in here and built this pot to get washed up in using the source pool just above. And then over the years, as things developed, different individuals, volunteers, came in and created some of these other pools, like the Crystal Pool right over there, the Sunrise Pool right up over here, and then a whole second set of springs, oh, about a half mile up above us here. These trees were brought in about the 1980s or so to provide some shade, and uh, but they also take quite a bit of water as well. So when this was first developed, this of course was just county land, and then it became BLM land, and now it's national park land. And fortunately, through the good work of volunteers that keep these springs in pristine condition, the volunteers and park service have a an agreement to allow public access to these springs still, even though they're not, it's, they're hard to get to, they're remote, very remote, and um, we like to keep it that way. <laughs> F-15 Eagles, one, two, I hear a third one, I don't see them yet, uh, maybe just a two ship. What they're doing is they're going down to the South Pass here, which I believe is gonna line them up for the Star Wars Canyon run, low level run. Yeah, look at that. They're both getting right on their each other's tail. Down the Star Wars Canyon run, where that F-18 hot-dogged it into the side of the canyon and, engineer, and injured those French tourists a couple years ago. This is one of the few places here in the States where you got this much wide-open territory to practice low-level mountain flying in high-performance jets. Here you can see them shining. Sun, shining in the sun down there So if you're driving out the uh, South Pass right now, you're about to get jumped There they go Go get them boys heading down to Star Wars Canyon Before takeoff checks are all complete, oil is warmed up and into the green. Let's go check out some of the rest of Death Valley. Eggs on both mixtures ready. Fuel is on, three quarter tanks. Laps are set. Temperature and pressures, check good. 157 Romeo Julia, Josh approach. Good morning. The uh, with Justin 3030. So three one and three two old flight restricted area two five zero five is just raised at about flight level two seven zero nine. 